Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors. If you're new to our channel, what we do here is we have videos on wilderness medicine, some gear reviews, and we specifically address zoonotic illnesses in the outdoors, what happens if you get hurt, how will you treat that, um, how do you treat lacerations and wounds for an adult versus a child um, in the outdoors, whether it takes a day to get back or a week to get back. Talk about all kinds of infections. So that's what we do. So if you're interested and you like this kind of material, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I don't think you'll be sorry. A lot of, a lot of stuff that we're talking about. All right, today we're gonna to address specifically the poison ivy rash and what it looks like. And I'm gonna show you also some pics of some rashes that often get confused with poison ivy. So I have to address a couple questions first. Uh, we have some questions from the last video. What part of the plant is contagious? Is all the part of the plant, um, does it have that oil? And is it worse at different types, uh, times of the season? So the poison ivy plant, the leaves, the stem, the roots, the berries, the, even the flower in the spring are all contagious. They all have the oil, which is urushiol which I'll put that on the screen here. And that oil is pervasive in all aspects of the plant. And if you burn it, yes, it can be in the air. Um, and it does not matter on the season, spring, summer, fall, uh, winter even, you can get poison ivy from any part of the plant. Heat, however, in the summer can make it worse. Not that the rash will get worse, but the itching, the sweat, Usually cool showers will help that. Uh, so that's the time of the year that it really is, you know, a real drag to get this uh, rash. Some important data on the rash. And uh, if you've never had poison ivy before and you get exposed to it, it'll take anywhere up to two weeks for the rash to become evident on your skin for it to occur. So first exposures, very similar, we talked about bee stings and wasp stings and the severe reaction and not severe reactions. So the first time you're exposed to poison ivy, it may take up to two weeks before you start getting a reaction. After you've had an exposure, you're looking at about anywhere from 12 hours to two days, and then you'll have the rash. Now, the plant, If sometimes if you look at the leaves, you're going to see black spots on the leaves. That's because either an insect or an animal has eaten the leaves, or the leaf has been broke, and the oil splatters. And when the urushiol oil gets in contact with oxygen, it oxidizes and literally turns black. Sometimes you'll even see the black spots on the rash. And that's a real indicator and a clue that it's definitely poison ivy. So look for that as a telltale sign. So if you get this oil on you, it's almost impossible to wash off. If you wash it off, you need to do it within the first hour to two hours that you have it. And that even may be too late. Now, if you just get soap and water and you wash your hands and wash your arms, you're not getting it off. In order to get the poison ivy oil off, you have to scrub, get a washcloth and you have to scrub your skin. And that will minimize, but you have to do it quickly. And the rash, the weeping of this rash that you're gonna see in a minute, that part is not contagious at all. So you cannot transfer this rash to another person just because you have the rash on you. Now, if you don't shower and you still have some oil residue on you, yes, that way you can. Um, about 10 to 12% of individuals I have severe, very severe reactions to this, um, just so you're aware of that percentage. So what does the rash look like? So I'm going to throw up some photos here of actual cases I've had. The, you're going to have redness. You can have streaking where the limb or the leaf crossed your skin. And you're then after the redness, you're going to get these little papules and vesicles and they break and they weep out. Um, so the photos you're going to see here is uh, one is behind the knee and another one on the leg and you'll see sometimes they can be quite extensive. Um, so first thing you're going to see is the redness on the skin and you may even have itching before there even is a rash. 
and then you usually get these vesicles, fluid-filled blisters, and they weep, and it just drives you nuts. We're going to eventually, in the next video, we're going to talk about treatment over-the-counter, best over-the-counter uh, treatment, and prescription. Now, uh, this next photograph is, it looks, it, it is a wasp sting, and the difference is here, you're not going to see blisters or vesicles, but it is obviously going to hurt. The person is going to know they were stung by a wasp or a bee or some, uh, some form of the Hymenoptera family. And then this next video, or uh, video, this next photograph is of shingles. Now, shingles often gets confused with poison ivy. And in this photograph, you're going to see the cluster, the cluster of little uh, blisters. Those will eventually get fluid filled and then eventually they scab over. But in the early stages, it often gets confused with poison ivy. And one of the differences is poison ivy itches and shingles usually burns or hurts. It can itch, but it's somewhat rare. And then in this next photo, we have chiggers. Really should not confuse this with poison ivy. Uh, this is a very prominent photograph of chiggers where you get these just brightly inflamed red dot areas on the legs, um, intense itching, and you see how they're sporadic. Uh, being sporadic like that, sometimes they get confused with flea bites, but this photograph is classic chiggers. And this last one, commonly gets confused with healthcare providers uh, with poison ivy and the treatment's the same so that's good and these are blisters from the uh, hog weed or the wild parsnip and that is the weed that we've talked about before and what it does is is that once that oil gets on you it has to interact with the sunlight in order for it to really formulate this blister and you'll see in the photograph there, those blisters look very identical to a poison ivy rash. And that's hogweed or wild parsnip. So there you have it. The rash of poison ivy, what are you looking for? And some of the other rashes that it's often confused with. Next time we're going to be focusing on treatment. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind. Stay rashless. Take care.